Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with the best brownies. That's right, everybody says their brownies are the best. And some even have the nerve to say they're the ultimate brownies. So who the heck are you supposed to believe? And how do you know which one really is the best brownie? Well, that's easy. Believe me, because these really are the best. And they feature the holy trinity of brownie perfection. A crispy flaky top, chewy edges, and fudgy center. And now that we've settled that argument once and for all, we can go ahead and get started with the least exciting step. And that would be to butter and parchment line an 8x8 baking dish. And yes, if you wanted to double this recipe and use a 9x13 baking dish, that would also work. Although I believe they'll be a little bit thicker and take a little bit longer. Oh, and the butter step is mandatory, but the parchment is optional. And we're only doing that to make it easier to get these out of the pan so we can make nice neat cuts. So if you don't want to add the buttered parchment paper, that's fine. I mean, you are after all the Robert Downies of your brownies. And speaking of iron, man, some buttered foil would also work. And then what we'll do once we have our baking dish prepped is move on to the second least exciting step. And that would be mixing up our dry ingredients, which is nothing more than all-purpose flour with a little bit of salt mixed in. And I like to do about three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt, which is not the same as three quarters of a teaspoon of fine salt. Okay, if you're using fine salt, you only want to use about half of that. But either way, we'll go ahead and give that a quick mix and then move on to the chocolate, which we really do want to make sure is exactly three ounces by weight. And besides using the exact right amount, we want to make sure this is unsweetened chocolate. All right, that's one of the keys to these brownies' amazing taste. So make sure you're checking the label and that it's 99 to 100% pure cacao, which as you might know is one of my favorite food words. And then what we'll do to our definitely unsweetened chocolate is go ahead and chop it up and add it to a heat-proof bowl containing one stick of butter, also known as one half cup or four ounces. And as always, we're gonna use unsalted butter. And what we'll do is place that over a couple inches of barely simmering water. Okay, this is over the lowest heat setting you have. And we're simply gonna let it sit there until it's just about all melted. At which point we can go ahead and give it a stir until it's fully melted and completely smooth and hopefully looks a little something like this, at which point we'll turn off the heat and reserve it until needed. And then we'll move on to the last component, which involves mixing a couple eggs into some white sugar. And for what I believe is the first time in Food Wish history, I'm actually gonna use an electric hand mixer. Okay, usually I'll either use my stand mixer or just do it with a whisk by hand, but I bought myself a little bit of a Christmas gift, and it really is the perfect tool for this operation. Because after about four or five minutes of mixing on high speed, we're gonna end up with something light, airy, and very, very creamy. And the reason it gets so light is because we're creating millions, maybe billions of air bubbles, which is gonna help us achieve what I think is the perfect brownie texture. And yes, by the way, you can definitely do this by hand, but it's gonna take you about 10 minutes, which is the bad news. The good news is you'll burn off enough calories where you can have an extra brownie. So suit yourself. And then what we'll do once our mixture looks like this is we'll go ahead and mix in some vanilla extract. Yes, of course, the pure and the real. And then what we'll do as soon as that's been incorporated is go ahead and add our melted chocolate mixture. And before I do, I'm gonna place my bowl on a wet rag so it doesn't spin while I mix. And just by habit, I'm gonna go ahead and do this by drizzling in gradually. Although to be honest, I'm not sure it's gonna make that much of a difference whether you poured it in fast or slow. And that's because as you mix this on high speed, that butter and chocolate are gonna cool and thicken, which is gonna trap air bubbles as you work this over with your mixer. And you'll see after a minute or two on high speed, you're gonna have a beautiful, thick, airy, luxurious looking mixture. But anyway, the point is we're gonna incorporate all our chocolate, which brings us to the last and most controversial step. Because what we're gonna do here is dump in all the flour, and then we will mix it on low speed until it just disappears. And yes, a lot of brownie experts are freaking out right now because they want you to gently fold the flour in with a spatula so as not to overmix anything. But trust me when I tell you this, it does not matter in this recipe. Okay, as long as you mix on slow and stop as soon as the flour disappears, it's gonna be perfect. And by the way, when I say disappear, I don't mean that little bit around the edge of the bowl, which is kinda of hard to get when you're using an electric mixer. But don't worry, because what we're gonna do next is grab a spatula and use that to scrape this into our prepared baking dish. And as we do, that little bit of flour is gonna get mixed in perfectly. So we will go ahead and transfer our thick and gorgeous batter in, making sure we're pushing that into all the corners, because we don't want any air bubbles or cavities especially since I forgot to give this the old tappa tappa before it went in the oven. And then besides that, we'll make sure the top gets spread out as evenly as possible. And that's it. 
that is now ready to transfer into the center of a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes or so, or until it looks like this. Which if everything goes according to plan should be absolutely gorgeous and not, I repeat, not undercooked. Okay, a skewer or toothpick poked in about two inches from the center should come out clean. All right, all these recipes that say it should come out with a little bit of batter on it are incorrect. Okay, if your batter is raw at this point, it's gonna be raw when this cools. Speaking of which, we're gonna let this sit and cool on a baking rack for exactly 15 minutes, during which time it's gonna deflate and collapse a little bit. Except like all brownie recipes, it's gonna be a little bit higher around the edges. So what I like to do after 15 minutes is take a spatula and go around lightly pressing around the outside, around the outside, around the outside, to slightly compress those higher parts, which is not only gonna give our brownies a nice, even, consistent thickness, but it's also gonna make those edges even chewier, which personally is my favorite part of a brownie. Okay, so after 15 minutes, we'll go ahead and give it a little press. And then we must, we have to let this cool all the way down to room temperature before we remove them from the pan and try to cut them. All right, it is a proven scientific fact that to fully appreciate a brownie's awesomeness, it must not, cannot still be warm. All right, not only does it not taste as good, the texture will not be as perfect. But once they have fully cooled and we've successfully removed those from the baking dish to a cutting board, we will use a long, thin serrated knife to cut these up. And by using the proper knife and making sure we cut through that crusty edge before finishing the cut, we will ensure ourselves of a perfect cut with no chance of those crusty edges breaking off. But for the sake of argument, let's say a little piece breaks off anyway. In that case, we have to do what we call in the business, destroying the evidence. And that's it. It's just like it never happened. But anyway, I went ahead and cut mine into nine squares. Or if you're a little more frugal, you can cut them into 12. Or if you're miserly, you can cut them into 16. And after cutting these, I could not wait to try one. But before I do, let me go ahead and grab a fork so you can hear just how crispy that top surface really is. Okay, so that's the first of the three things it makes for a perfect brownie, a crispy, flaky surface. And then I went ahead and took a bite so I could enjoy the second thing that makes a perfect brownie, a tender, moist, extremely fudgy inside. Okay, anybody can claim they made a fudgy brownie by undercooking it, but that is not really a proper fudgy brownie. All right, that is just raw pasty undercooked batter in the middle. What I want is the best of both worlds. Something that's fully cooked and not raw, but still very, very fudgy and moist. And that's exactly what we have here. And then of course the third thing and my personal favorite, that irresistibly chewy outside edge. Which is why, by the way, I always avoid that centerpiece. And of course, we're not going to eat these brownies plain like some kind of barbarians. We are definitely going to pair them with some nice ice-cold milk. And my system here for the fudgy parts is to bite and drink. And then for the chewy parts, it's to dip and bite. And if you're thinking to yourself, isn't it borderline insulting giving people instructions on how to eat a brownie? You know what? You're right. It kind of is. But it is just so perfect, I felt like I had a share. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling the best brownies also known as the best brownies. I realize I can't prove these are the best, but I also know I don't have to. And ultimately you will be the judge, which is why I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.